Hello and welcome to the Daily Decrypt episode 10. I'm your host, Amanda, and we've got a lot of good news today, not the least of which is the Bitcoin price, $260. So I've just stumbled on a site called Synapse, and Synapse looks to be a marketplace for buying and selling answers to complex questions. Anybody can ask a question and offer up a bounty for a correct answer. Other users of the site, other people who want to see that question get answered, uh, can contribute to the bounty themselves. And then, if a person gets the correct answer, uh, they will be rewarded either all or some of that bounty. Multiple awards can be given out for multiple answers. And I just thought it looked really neat. Let me give you an example of some of the questions on here right now. Someone is asking, how do you anonymize logging on your Electrum server? Someone is asking, which top blockchain technologies will be prominent in five years? Looks like whoever answers that question will get 0 .044 bitcoins. I guess that's 44 millibits, yeah. And so they all look like very techy, very crypto related questions, uh, but the site administrators say that all questions are naturally welcome. Whatever you wanna pay for is what you can ask. Next is this journal uh, called Ledger that is being published by the University of Pittsburgh. And they seek to be the first peer-reviewed scholarly journal that publishes full-length original research articles on cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. Their pitch. Uh, so anyway, they are soliciting original research papers for their first quarterly edition. So anyone who would like to submit a research piece to Ledger has until December 31st to do so. And after that, they'll be accepting submissions all the time for future quarterly editions looks to be. The city Chattanooga in Tennessee is apparently going to roll out city government run internet that will be a thousand times faster than the average broadband speed of the average person in the US. So they call themselves the Chattanooga Electric Power Board and it says that they will be offering up to 10 gigabit speed uh, and that'll be the top tier service at $300 a month. They'll also offer 5 gigabit speed and 3. And my initial reaction to the story was, hey, that's super unfair competition because this internet service is going to be subsidized by tax money uh, rather than actual customer demand. But then I saw the history a bit more, and it turns out Comcast believes that Chattanooga is their territory also. And being a cable company, Comcast has of course lobbied for government regulations that make it harder to compete with them. And so I suppose if the Chattanooga Electric Power Board is going to compete with Comcast, I really can't argue with competition. Or 10 gigabit speeds. Today, Ars Technica is reporting on research released by Alex Halderman and Nadia Henninger, who basically claim that the NSA, with its $11 billion per year budget, a billion with a B, it's $30 million a day if you'd like to know, um, can likely crack a lot of forms of encryption used but not because of a flaw in the encryption itself. They're specifically referring to 1024-bit uh, keys used in Diffie-Hellman cryptographic key exchanges. That aside, the problem seems to be that a lot of the SSH servers and VPNs and HTTPS websites who use this type of cryptography uh, don't use random enough prime numbers. They're really just going to a handful of like the same prime numbers all the time, which makes this stuff more easily cracked. But then the Electronic Frontier Foundation published an article on basically how to retrofit uh, some of your computer's software, uh, namely your browser, but other things too, 
um, to deal with these cryptographic vulnerabilities. Seems as though the crypto wars continue in a cat and mouse chase as they have since the 90s. The next web reports that there is a new company called Voxelis, uh, which wants to launch a virtual reality content creation platform in early 2016 uh, that will basically be a marketplace for virtual reality, what they're calling assets. So I'm assuming it says assets, animations, and immersive worlds, and games. So the software required to enter virtual reality, I'm assuming. Uh, and interestingly, they will be creating their own cryptocurrency, uh, which they will call voxels, or the, that will be the unit, voxels, and it will be the only form of currency accepted in the Voxelis store. Apparently the Voxelis software has already had a lot of downloads. And their main pitching point is that it enables you to create virtual reality games without knowing how to code yourself. Not a lot of virtual reality hardware is available for purchase right now, uh, like the much touted Oculus Rift uh, is not even for sale yet, but it looks like there's something from Samsung called Gear VR uh, that's a headset and is one of the few currently available apparently. I don't know anyone with virtual reality tools, maybe you do, maybe you could enlighten me in the comment section. So that aside, the public offerings of voxels will begin on November 2nd. And the marketplace for virtual reality games created by users will be launched first quarter of 2016. A little bit of health news here. There's a company called K2M, uh, which has just released what they're calling the Lamellar Titanium Technology, which is a closed source sort of 3D printing technique, which they say can create uh, spinal implants that prompt bones to regrow due to their porous and rough biomaterial. And Ars Technica has published a piece in which some unknown, unnamed scientists and researchers, maybe they exist, how could I know? Um, but author Shalini Saxena says that these researchers and scientists have successfully created what they're calling an organoid uh, for a, is it a kidney? It's a kidney. So an organoid is not a fully functioning, ready to be transplanted organ, but is something less than. But the article concludes that these kidney organoids uh, can be used to test kidney drugs, to check for side effects and interactions um, before testing them on living creatures. And lastly, a YouTube channel called CryptoFresh has today released a 30-minute, it looks like a, a road documentary really, called BitShares Peer-to-Peer -to -peer Tour. I have not yet dug into the entire film, I just watched about the first 20 seconds and I thought it looked delightful and so I thought that I would share it with you here. So that is your daily decrypt. I hope you enjoyed today's a little more relaxed atmosphere and certainly the background of the Chattanooga Choo Choo. Be sure to check out our podcast and our show links are in the description. Have a wonderful day.